Hello and welcome to DevCast Stops. We are quite loud. Uh, I'm James, and today, as always, we have Barnaby to my right and Wiley at the bottom, as well as this first same order as we are for Discord normally. Uh, we are using a slightly different tool, so um, hopefully all goes well. I'm sure there'll be some technical problems. <laughs> and today, we need to have more faith. Yes, we need to have all the faith that things just work. Because it's technology. Um, today, Barnaby is going to be carrying on the CDK, the CDK stuff we did three weeks ago now. Was it three weeks? Two weeks. Two weeks. Just two. I think it was two because we had your the hashy days in the middle. Yeah, so it's a list list and... yeah. yeah. Should get the list. Uh, anyway, without further ado, I'm moving to the barn and we can see. The screen. Cool. Yeah. So hopefully, well, I think I have successfully managed to wipe the vault that we had. So, that was it. so this is the issue that the um, yeah, the persistent volume claim was there, and I force deleted the claim that we just said support the vault in this window. See. So I've got the vault cluster up and running and I just need to support my vault cluster. Oh, I am professional my glass is so dirty. Where's your cleaning toy started? It's probably looking into the light. Only then do you realise how dirty your glasses are. So what's the, I suppose to give people a brief summary, what's the planned outcome for the stream? Um, I don't know if we have like a final resting point. I think it's kind of just messing around a little bit with kind of the vault provider and carrying on with the CDK, maybe building something more useful than just, what did we have last time? Go back to it. We had an Nginx container. So oh, yes. hopefully. <laughs> Have something a little bit better, so let me get the whole box up and do the right port. I suppose kind of the, the issue that we're trying to do a little bit with the vault provider is if you if you're trying to give your users a very simple way of managing their own um, their own kind of namespace, having a way of mapping that into Terraform can get quite convoluted if you're not careful with um, how you manage it. And the CDK means you've got a easy way of adding conditional thoughts and information. And if they've got this, then do something else. If they've got this other thing, do it a different way. Then uh, maybe some of the default stuff that you can do. Yeah, so we're running this open source for today because I don't have an enterprise license to hand and we can I think we can get away with most of stuff without an enterprise license. So let's bring this back. So I've just logged in as root for now and you can see this is pretty blank vault. There's not really anything here. So we're going to have a mess around with the Vault Provider. So let's go and delve in first to the docs for the Provider to see how it all works. So the way to find these is you search these on GitHub and let's go to a Vault. I wonder what Vault Go is. Um, it's the, so all the providers and the, all the telephone provider need a Go uh, client of which that actually runs the command. So Terraform just wraps, just wraps Go. So everything you want to run a Terraform provider on needs to have a Go uh, client. So most of this stuff is like really um, intricate Go clients because it needs it for Terraform to do what it wants to. Yeah, we, can it we tried to install this uh, to my client side. On my client laptop, I was asking Thursday, 
<laughs> that that didn't work out. Did, did you? I can't remember if you had npm installed to start off with. That was the problem. I couldn't even get that. So I think we, yeah, we couldn't get all the node dependencies. I think was the issue. Yeah. Um, but I have npm installed. I know you can install additional. You can either do it at the start, like we did last week, when you have your CDK, CDK, um, CDK in it. And if you, you have like a providers block or a dependencies block, so you can put in your dependencies there. Um, what I've tried today is I have just Um, just I have just installed it using this. I've installed the Vault Provider with just an npm command. And let's go and have a look into this to have a lot more detail. So if we go to Python, uh, so we'll carry on to Python. We'll reuse the same file as I'm feeling a little lazy today. And this is just a bit messy. So I'll, I'll create a clean slate when I'm going to do this properly. So here we can see the provider we're given the sort of information about what it is. So we've got a scope contract. We need to import it first. And this will probably clash with the old imports actually. Oh it's called Docker Provider. That's nice. So can I oh, yeah, so we imported it as from the Doc Provider. So this time we're just gonna we have this top level here. So we need to work clash. Um, and I have created a new stack, which is just a separate block from this. And I don't really want to mess with the old ones, so I'm just going to comment that out. So now. is this on top of your Docker? Your it's in the same Docker. file. Oh. The Docker stuff's up here, but it's a different stack. Yeah. So they don't interact. Cooler and there's a couple of other things we need. And let's do this. This whole like multiple stack stuff within the CDK, I, I'm really like unsure if it is the best thing they've got or if it's absolutely rubbish and I would never want to do it. I haven't had a mess with them playing nicely together. The last time I was messing with it, it told me I couldn't run one while the other was up. So I don't know if that's something I need to select. Oh, so maybe it's like designed, you have like a dev stack and a yeah. prod stack, and it deploys them differently depending on what, what it is. And... Feel like we're going to be getting to the point where we need to start moving us, uh, moving us around the screen, depending on where the useful information is. Yeah, the moment just populated some of the provider stuff. I think at this at this point, would it not be better to just keep it on the bottom right? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I'm a little bit worried about. The amount of stuff I must my computer to do. But at least I'm not doing the demo this time. Yeah. Let's take this to another one. Another sharing. In, uh, my Vault token here now is for a dev one. Um, yeah, well, since we're on Vault, anyways, um, have you heard back from your uh, from Vault in terms of the exam you took? No, not yet. I keep on checking my emails. Nah. Yeah. Well, uh, taking taking the time with the uh, demo, with the beta. Yeah. I kind of wanted a little while ago. This was like, oh, it'll be two weeks. I was like, oh, great. <laughs> but it's nearly been two weeks now, so I would have thought, oh, 
Let's go. Hang on. I'll let you know if I pass or not, so I can know if I'm the book here. Or if I'm... Yeah, if you need to take over. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, mine was, I'm sure mine was um, within 48 hours, I found out. I know it's a different system, so I'm probably trying to do fancy things. But... Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So now it's 40 days, and let's actually see if this does. I don't do anything to actually do anything with this. It's an interesting part about, uh, about Terraform as well is an empty provider uh, if all you've got is the provider block it won't authenticate a provider block with no resources it doesn't actually run the setup of the provider block which just seems weird yeah, but in that case let's grab a resource anyone got a preference on resource type to build first uh, either a secret or an auth let's start with secret let's just enable a secret first Enable yeah, just like enable a simple KV. So, yeah. <clears throat> let's go Let's get my mind out of the window, windows. Yeah. KV2 is good. The KV2? Is there not a KV mount different to mounts? All of the mounts are the same. All of the secret engine mounts are done through the mount block. Oh. But you can, these are all rolls and backends, but there's no. Oh, okay. I mean, it makes anything sense. Anything to do with key value in here because. Uh, I guess, oh yeah, well, the data blocks are full. Full secrets. Yeah, you can create secret, secret backend. Yeah. Entirely sure what this is. I love it, so I prefer to, prefer to tear from registry for docs. It's 90% of it, isn't it? Yeah, so see, this is even... Yeah. Thing. Yeah, I think yeah, it's... Yeah, I can never remember... Um, what things how it works with bot yeah so we we can go with this so we need the correct window so we need self uh we need my like east terraform why, why would you put kv in the id name <laughs> Yeah, because <laughs> otherwise it's just a mount, and I get confused. Oh yes, this is the ID for the yeah. terraform. It's not um... the, the only time when it's worth actually putting the what it is inside of the resource name. Yeah, when my state breaks and I need to find this. Yeah, it'd be if you put mount in the ID name. That's when it's like, what are you doing? I've learned anything. If you, you're doing examples, you may as well use them for free marketing. Oh, definitely. Surely it should be, uh, please subscribe. I don't know what all our resources should be called. Probably for more. Yeah. Um, type so even this um, version 2, you don't have to say KV2? I will get on to that in a little bit. So there is a, a way that Terraform prefers you to provision um, KBB to A shame the uh, what button he's on looks so good on the stream, but the thing we're doing it's a little bit hard to see what's going on. 
thought it was just me, you know, um, the blurriness, right? But yeah, on the, on the stream, it's fine. Like, there's yeah. no problems on the stream. It's so that's just, why I, um, I have the stream um, the proper the full screen on my right, so I can at least, it's a little bit delayed, but it's okay. It still does the job. And it's fine on here, it's just when, when you change the, like, docks. It's me uh, jumping around. I need to make, yeah, the, the docks are a little bit small. But it, I mean, yeah, it's it's fine. It's just the the way we're seeing it, it gets a little bit fuzzy. Only for a bit, so it's fine. Don't worry. Uh, That's probably because we're not on a direct uh, stream. I guess we can see if we've got remember the syntax right and see if this works. Who's helping? And it's probably going to tell me I don't have. Yeah. <laughs> OS has no attribute get. Well, it probably hasn't. So this is hitting the. Yeah. Don't you have uh, to say get environment? You, get you in. Oh, no, yeah, it should be get in. Uh, it's just. Maybe tab in not work. Um. It's a good point. You would normally have to import, but I think OS is a core Python module, so it's it's downloaded by default. Feed it. I use an valid string. Which value? I'm able to deserialize value string. Value is a number. You need to put your two in quotes. I think they're very easy. Yeah. Which is funny because Python is one of those languages that numbers and strings don't matter except when they really do. And now I should have. Oh, that seems to be happy. Alright, this is a little bit bigger again. So we can see here we're getting a, a bulk mount. Path and stuff. So, in theory, if we apply this, CDK, can we? Can we check if the um, if they've aliased apply in the have, yeah, but it doesn't come from the docs. <laughs> <laughs> it's so incorrect, but people will do it. Yeah, if you've been working with Terraform for ages. And, you know, there's no apply in the available commands that you get when you run help. But What's it does. It? It's deploy, isn't it? It's yeah, the... deploy is given stack, so it's the same thing. So that should be running. We now have hello from DCO. Yay! So. I guess next step we can mess around with auths and maybe I might show a little bit of the value of this and override the basic auths. Auth so right. we can kind of harden it. So back to this. Um, oh, you're talking, sorry, on that um, run on the right, you can see it's the supply in the terminal. Which one? Deploy all the way to the right, it says aliases. Ah. Oh, and diff aliases to plan. I like how synth alias to synthesize. <laughs> they probably used to be the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> An output, out, aliases to outputs. I mean. Yeah. If I was too lazy, if I hadn't commented out, I guess I could specify the stack instead of just hitting it. But anyway, um, yeah, I was going to make a directory because I'm going to start messing around a little bit more. So it's probably worthwhile doing uh, functions or modules. Start getting into the more proper way of coding. I'd like to caveat that I am not a developer, a Python developer, so this will not be the best Python code. <laughs> <laughs> Just caveat, caveat all our uh, episodes with 
we're not anything. We're just some people messing with this shit. Just uh... we're students. Always students. Yeah, I'm gonna be going and put it in it, and uh, even though I'm not sure if necessary anymore. Like the module it sees it as. That would be a nice empty in it. Alright. Oh, we've got some load modules. I'm glad that the um, the import went well and didn't disinstalling it didn't I didn't have to run anything to pull that um, Python package into or the Terraform the CDK provider into the project. It just picked it up after it was installed, yeah. which is nice. I guess it's similar to your picking stuff. So, what do you Well, to be honest, I was just thinking if it was to go back to the end.py file, please. The end.py? The, the main one. The, it's already open, your main file. That's fine. Uh, yeah. So, in this case, right, we literally just created a uh, KV store, right? Yeah. Um, Technically, we could have done this easily if we using Terraform as well. Right? Yes. But then, as part of using CDK, where would you, why, why would you want to use CDK now for creating KV? Um, if you wanted to do something more with this and maybe map it into policies and stuff like that and pass it around and build things programmatically off this. So in this case, we have this hard coded. This may be a team name that's built of something else. So we're doing stuff like this. There's not a huge value in the CDK. The only real reason that you might use it is if you really know Python and you don't know HCL or if you know any of the other four languages. And if your Python devs need to deploy yeah. vault resources, the CDK means they don't have to worry about Terraform syntax. It's just Python code. Yeah. And what Barnaby's about to show, you can uh, yeah, more forcefully look. lock down stuff than you can in stuff like Terraform. So let's go back here, and we're going to start with messing around with force methods. So, force back end is what we want. And also, I think at the point where you're loading in values from a JSON or demo file that your devs are writing, that's also when stuff like the CDK is useful because you yep. can uh, consume them a little bit cleaner. Okay, right. So I'm going to mess around with overwriting this to lock it down. So, uh, let's call it let's call the same thing. I need to remember how to do it, and then we want to do this. As in, we want to put that in. It's not actually with that. It will need something in it, probably. Yeah. It passes the least you can do. Pass? Pass. It's um, a do nothing command. Okay, so let's go back to this and we'll start messing around with these. So some of these things we need, but let's have a look. So the bit we're going to mess really hard override is we're going to override this tune block. So, but first we want to do Super uh, bot. Yeah. Think of itself. And we need an init here. And it lives inside the inner as the books. No, the super wouldn't be within the quotes. Not within the inner? 
No, but it's Python. What's in the init is defined by the colon and the thing, isn't it? I can't remember how Python works in the thingy. That's my work for a while. I'm going to go overriding classes in Python. <laughs> we completely virtual this. Because there should be init quotes with the constructor of that colon and then super init within there. Because uh, the init's a thing of. Um, right. The init is part of polymorphism. It's not a particularly like Pythonic thing. No. Uh, class parent. There you go. <coughs> Death in it. Sub. <coughs> so they're not calling super, but I assume it's the same sort of thing. You need to tab your super. Uh, you probably need to death in it, I think. Yeah. yeah so, um, so uh, what do you want to pass in? You need scope. So, you're passing that board. Scope. And then, there's other things we need. Uh, we need pass. And. Definitely need. Uh, but we could also just leave it at that. We could just go um, self scope yeah. and then everything else we can force and be like, you want a GitLab authentication method. This is what the module gives you. And then your users just install that module and then, or install that um, Python module. And then they can just go, yep, give me a auth methods and then run their CDK code. Which is, I mean, it's very similar to Python modules in that regard. I'm going to run into Is path uh, protected? No. I don't know, but for consistency, it was. I think I might be able to get away with this one. There's things you can potentially get away with. Next, we can see if we can see if we get away with it. And just type. I don't think types are allowed. I think it might. It might survive. Uh, scoop. Scoop. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, I guess we'll see if this works. Sorry, let's save that. So in theory, this is overridden enough for us to do something with. Um, and then we now need to import it. Oh, import. So this is where if I was 
going far into this, I would probably try and build like an enum for the type, just so you don't have to um, pass it through the string. But that is far more complicated than we probably need. I suppose you could do const values. Const values. I guess you, uh, what I had, I think, one it might be better. Um, was subscribe. Oh, so it's yes. follow because we're on Twitch. Sorry. Can you like on Twitch? No. You can just follow. So I mean, at our level, you can just follow. But we work on likes. At some point, we get biddies if we do really well. But long way from that. Oh, it takes two. Uh, takes the most two arguments, three given so something. And it's not being passed correctly. I think I have forgotten to pass through ID. Ah, yes. ID is also important. Perhaps if you save your file before running, running it again, otherwise you just get the same thing again. Still not liking it. The most two arguments to a given. Overridden line. Oh. Pass also. Self to ID pass. And we are handing it. I guess let's print these out and see what. What is actually being picked up? Just go. Right. Try to work out what we've given something that's two arguments that needs three. I think it takes at most two, but we've given three. We've given one more argument than is. Yeah. Is required. if that prints out anything useful. No, it still doesn't like it. David makes two thirds of self use a pass. Type. Uh, you're not giving it a scope either. Self scope ID path type. You so you're not giving it a scope. Yeah. So it should There's, be self scope ID. I think self is scope. No. Just scope is the. So we don't pass it anything else. I wonder if we take scope out, whether it will affect it. Yes, let's go. Maybe go well, then you're within your in it. You're asking for both scope and config, uh, both self and scope. The scope is a contract. Contract. No, we don't need to pass. Oh, I think scope is self. Yes. Uh... Yeah, maybe try deleting. Itself from in it. Self from there. Uh, 
this is yeah, two. Right. And it's not giving you any other errors or debug earlier in the error, is it? No, I don't think so. See, you can have an error while synthesizing command error from modules and portals back end type module takes the most of your arguments through a given line four, which is this one. Yeah, it's just where it's from the class. Check something. Where's my left? Check something subtly on another computer. <laughs> Backed away. The secret debug. Uh, module takes arguments to a given. We're not directly calling module. So, what I have here is spell. Oh, I know what it is. Um, so, if, I've set up the inheritance for what it is. Let me see. Oh, for the super thing, you have to give it itself as well. Yeah, she gave. Yeah, let me give this a deal. It's uh, okay. That should fix that, and then here, this needs to be. Um, that makes sense. Main, because then we're actually overriding what we mean to be overriding. Your Whereas, order's wrong, I think, now. Oh, um, it's happy. It okay. doesn't matter because, I guess, did I not type path? Why do you? It's also, well, it's just, yeah, it's just the, the idea is. You're not passing a scope, are you? No, that is no, true. Yeah. But I think right? self self has a scope. I'm surprised it picked up this as ID. Yeah, that's my. The pass like and follow the types use a pass. Uh, it's just not bound ID. So if I set this to ID. But that's what the ID. That's what you've put the ID is, hasn't it? Yeah, it is what I put the idea. But I picked such a generic name for it. Bless <laughs> <laughs> you. Yeah, I don't want to suddenly come by it's easy. <laughs> It is hay fever season. Yeah. You just asked me about humans. Do we have a um, format in this as well? Sorry? No. We have a format. Yeah. Oh, okay, no. I don't think so. That's uh, what? We... It's called Pirate. Or uh, Black Eight, I think, is the crazy one. I don't know. Okay. Um, right. One, uh, <laughs> I don't think it will it's complain a lot. Uh, so the next bit that I wanted to mess with to kind of show the value of this, I want to set a couple of things. So I have a max PTL and a default PTL. And I will set my variable to the side so it's a little bit easier to read. It's 
there a constant Python? Hmm? Is there a pollute constant Python? Uh, I guess putting it into a tuple somewhere. I think it's defined as a tuple might be. Yeah, in um, in JavaScript, there's just a const um, thing. So, so. So that's essentially that's a week worth of seconds if anyone's can't, not doing can't, doing maths quickly. Which I don't blame you. <laughs> so I'm essentially just setting up um, limits for what I want here. So and then. So the plan of this is to make sure that users can't enter values higher than what we set the defaults to, yeah? Yes. So we need a tune, which is a list of a map, which don't ask me why it just is. Tune equals. Uh, comma after trip after type. Line fourteen. Ah yes. I kind of wish you uh, language is a bit just enforced training commas so that you would always put a comma at the end. So. <laughs> so, oh, you don't need it the last one, and I forget to put it on. And I go, oh, I'm going to add something else to this, and just don't click this. Just just uh, living where there's no training commas. It's a starting uh, hyphen. Is there any reason you're not doing um, math.max? Um, what, so the max out of the two? I don't know. I don't use maths unless I'm doing something really maths generally. I would use it for stuff like differentiation, sort of. Um, oh, no. Max is an effect well. Sine waves and stuff um, like that. Oh, there's a cell. There's a cell function. There's a ceiling function. Yeah. Wait, that's not what I want. Rounds no. the number up to the nearest integer. I feel like there should be a um, thing, but I suppose if you're just going to error. Yeah, the error Can message you... should be. I'm not actually going to error in this case. Cause... Okay. Warning. Mm -hmm. Just throw. Sorry? No. Well, just throw and then your message. Uh, um, what I'm going to do is because I don't actually want um, it to stop. Yeah. If you're going to tell me just for catch block at the end. <laughs> um, no, um, just throw and make the user have. So if you were, if I was creating this for a user to you to consume the module we're we're making. Um, I would probably throw an error, so the user had to not load in a value that's too high. But if the plan is to um, 
write something that it doesn't matter what the en entry is, it will just run. Um, that makes sense. We just get a little warning notice. Though, yeah. and I look forward to when no one reads the message and complains that the um, value isn't enough. Yeah, and they will be told that they're not compliant, and that's their problem. <laughs> Won't be compliant. I am. I am very in favour for setting standard patterns, agreeing on these things, building it so it's in the way. And if someone comes to you and tells you, this isn't working because we're trying to do something that isn't the within the bounds of what we're allowed to do, you, and that. <laughs> yeah, I agree. But I'm also the person that wants to just turn off all the infrastructure and turn it back on. Uh, when you need to apply an update, which um, some people don't agree so much with that. Uh, as long as you don't turn it all off at once. <laughs> oh, but I'm also in favour of like, this is old. Tell you, give users a month and then just turn it off. <laughs> like, we've given you the new version. If you want to use the old version, you have a month and then we're getting rid of it. I, I don't think I'm quite so extreme anymore. I think I am now. Um, you will no longer get support for old version after a certain amount of time. And if you come to me telling me something's broken, I'll tell you how to move to the new. Um, I have to move to the new version for effects. Yeah, the the problem comes when you have to maintain the old version's code, and the new version is easier to maintain. I will stop maintaining the old version's code after a while. There just won't be support for it. <laughs> if you want to carry on running it, <laughs> fine. <laughs> There's not going to be support. So if it breaks, don't be surprised. Um, it's not okay. breaks. It's like, hey, we've got a new user. Yeah, well, <laughs> you were told to update months ago. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> this should now, um, if I've got that right. Yeah, so this is now set. This to I guess it won't actually do anything because we haven't put anything in. It has given the tune block, which is no NASA reply, which is interesting because we don't have anything. But let's they will give it some... to zero. Don't need to default to default to system, which would be thirty two days. No, but you're you're now passing values in. Which means an empty value is zero. I guess we can deploy it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's great to transfer the values to like none, or it's going no, it's to <laughs> um, create the TTLs as, oh, I suppose, zero, which is infinite. Path. Um, oh yeah, I've got to get you a bit of dumb name. <laughs> <laughs> and now you live with your mistakes. <laughs> um, if I do a detail, will it give me a tune? I guess. Oh no, I'm just going to read the config. Mm. Oh, that is really filtering. Oh, I should move us because we're messing with the bottom. No. Can you tell it to format into JSON? Oh, yeah. Because at least I hope you'll be key value pairs. So, token, and you don't care about. Let's make this code. Uh, yeah, zero, zero. Yeah. Yeah. Which surely is a problem because isn't zero infinite in this? Yeah, I think so. Or it's nothing. Depending. Well, we can't, yeah, have, we can't have not a TTL. <laughs> I guess let's create a user and see what. User. 
und du passt dich bitte. Likes of putting out like, like, and like slash and slash follow. <laughs> you scroll up. Yeah, yeah. It's just a key, like and follow. With nice. it is a lowercase. This. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I need you to uh, do uppercase as well. You're missing an R. User. Yeah. So it cap it's capped it back to the system system default. Yay, that bug. <laughs> 31, yeah. I think if I set that to longer than 31 days, we we'll have a mess with that in a bit. But show the rest of the time so now if we go take this down and go back to main and we actually would you for a production level then you'd also want to make sure the default ttls are greater than one um i guess yeah for this or set if it's unset as well, you'll have to catch. There's a few things. Yeah, so you can, you can make a default. So you can just within the. Um, yeah, if we go. Where is it? Sig signature? Backwards. Yeah, within the method signature. You can mm -hmm. set defaults. Hey, then you can set those. Very aggressively, don't keep it. Let's let the max be a little bit longer. I wonder if. Can you default to a variable? You could do, probably. Like, could you default to the ceiling? Yeah. I guess let's give it a go, see if it complains. This is the sort of stuff that I've never, like, had a real use case for is the, like, default and that sort of stuff. What, the standard values? Yeah, yeah I, I very rarely have reasons to use them. Uh, let's set uh, our default details. Yeah, say we want to go huge with this. So we're going to do... 24. <laughs> That's 24. <laughs> nice big number. <laughs> it reminds me of those at the sketch from... Oh, I think there's like a Doctor Who reference. It, it's like... It was like... Is, is 10 a lot? It's like, it depends what you're talking about. 10 grains of sand? No. 10 planets? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you could just mash zero after it. Um, so say if someone tried to do 100 days, it'd be like, Absolute insanity, it would get. But now, so let's say if we do. Also, um, have you looked into outputs as well? The outputs? Mm -hmm. So we could have. It's just a similar block. Off back into inner caution and then it's based on argument default GTN. So your defaults cannot be variables, at least. Um, it looks like it can't be defaults. They can't be um, variables. That's a shame. Wait, I expect to do it in I think that might be something else, actually. Yeah. Did uh, I just name something wrong? It's within the super. 
as well, wrong things in the tune block. Oh, is it because we're now... Uh... It's weird that it, I suppose we're saying into zero, so it was just like, these aren't things we care about, that's... <laughs> it doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, it'd be interesting. Might... No, so... So it doesn't like default TTL. How about it? Backend in it. That's an unexpected keyword argument. I think we can just spell this one. Are they correct in the main .py as well? Yeah, that's yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. It's still. Guys. Maybe just. I wonder if. I guess, let's see if it's. Like Max as well, That's interesting. Mm. It just doesn't like default. Well, it's the first one that it fails on. Unexpected key. Okay, I don't like mats as well now. Can you try deleting the the, the equals in the init so it's just um, max detail and default detail? Oh, in the. Can you can I see the main file, please? Yeah. I think it's from here. So it doesn't uh, max it well. Mm -hmm. um, Let's check my import soon. On mm. your overridden file, can you move ID to where you actually call that? Okay, um, in main PWI, can you just comment out the uh, line 56 and 57 for now? Yeah. 
And the documentation is expecting those values. Um, you can put them in. You put them in a tune block. Block. So. Matt, that is. That's calling our overridden thing, not the actual module. Yeah. Can so you rename? Still... Can you rename our overridden thing to something slightly different? So it's not the same name. Mm. It, I mean, it, yeah, just uh, and then just do the rename. Well, the first thing depends on how you import it at the time. It's interesting, they don't actually find an off the back end. So this is the issue. So it's it's not doing the overridden one. It's doing. It's trying to do the correct. It's trying to do the vault one, not our one, which was the issues we're having. I think it did the. That so the second bit needs to be the name of the function. It needs to be the name of the class. And the first bit needs to be where it says for modules. So that, I suppose that needs to be yeah, called back end. Yeah. And then you should just be able to do there. Um, you should just be able to do back end. You shouldn't need the bottom thing. Yeah. There you go. Import trees, yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, so that's this kicking in. But it's also hmm. missing the ID. Yep. Which should be used hmm. pass made by humans, isn't it? Yes, that should be. I guess maybe this is just one. So I don't think we've ever we actually ever ran that back end code or something. It's weird. Professional account ID. Can I put it as an underscore? So the. I think. I don't know. Ooh, that's the super it's failing, I think. Yeah, that's the, the super needs a ID that's not ID for something, it just needs to be ID. So it's positional. So I can now just give that. that yeah. With a comma. Yeah. And there we go. Tune which still doesn't actually populate anything. Have I not got these values right? Is that, is that the issue? I guess I can approve this and read it from the uh, folks if it's actually token. That's not picked up. 
Is it because it's part? It's not passing to his ends. It's passing to something else. Would it? Oh, it probably expects strings. Well, maybe it would expect. Uh, the dots the... tell you what it was? Uh, the... We can have a look, but I have a feeling the answer is no. Uh, represent them. Let's have a look. Tune is a typing union. Great. Yeah. The... I suppose Bill with the telephone will say. It is expecting strings. Oh, with the S. I think you might be able to get away with it out the ass, but... I mean, if not, you can just do a format. See the how successful. Uh, nothing changed. Maybe it does need the uh, yes. Would that not put a space in the middle? Mm, no. Um, we? Sometimes the concatenation stuff. <laughs> Could this be an issue with the telephone thinks there's no difference, but actually there is? Possibly. Uh, yeah, I was, was going to intrigue to see if I change this, whether it, it's... You have to make it smaller. Make it bigger. The max, the ceiling. I, don't, the, I don't think the max is hitting the ceiling. Oh, no. Go back and read my warning messages. Yeah, it's the default is hitting the ceiling. Yeah, I don't think it's... Uh, okay, sure. That's just not dating then. <laughs> that's just a, that's a raw terraform problem that one is. Be interesting to see if it says um if it actually populates the tune block. No, no, it still doesn't want to put anything in. Can you just put the number in manually for now? Rather yeah, than you, you, want, you want to see if we hard code it, if it, yeah. um, that picks up properly. Yeah. Is the tuna no, a stay way of... Sorry, stay with S because remember we were doing S, right? On no. S. Did you not put S at the um, in the previous one? Yes, you can do, but these are just the, the vault sound and strings. Tune requires the list. It Isn't does. Tune just does it. It does in the CDK. <laughs> I can take it out and I can show you what happens. It's really not like it. Um, but yeah, we can take it out. Yeah, 
The error message is a little weird, but yeah, you get these very unhelpful. Oh, okay. Helpful error messages. Not the way. Oh, it says value is not the way. It's... Yeah. <laughs> but from the docs, trying to figure out that it actually wants an array from typing union resolve, typing list, or yeah. back in tune. I mean, is there a fourth back in tune thing? What, and what back in tune? Um... Pass. Let's go look. Like you click on the link there, yeah. Um, the corresponding terrace on them. We could have a look and see what maybe put something else. Let's try to see if the token type gets picked up. Alright, so there's an auth backend tune interface. This is the wrong. Are you in the wrong, wrong well, language? Well, I'm in. I'm in the TypeScript. <laughs> but just exports. Yeah. So it looks yeah. like you should be able to go. So. I mean, if you're willing to um, willing to try, yeah. so in the square brackets, yeah, it would be auth backend. Dot um, auth backend tune. Ah, oh, it's not. It's not auto picking up. Uh, it's. All one so, word, capital A, capital B, capital T. Uh, it's probably because I haven't imported it. You've imported off back end. Oh, yeah. Yeah, from the top, go from off back end, import. Uh, no, yeah, no, you're importing off back end. It'll be in the same mode, I think. But this isn't the Python version of the code. The Python. It's all a bit sporadic, isn't it? Yeah. What What's this in the TypeScript block, is it? Yeah, I was looking at the TypeScript stuff. Is it, it will want something like That would be my expectation. Uh, yeah, because it's all just like loads it from um, the TypeScript. Oh, you liked it. No, no yeah. yeah. It needs it to be 
in that particular type. Uh, and, and that then, is probably a cleaner way of doing it anyway. I don't know what happens if you have multiple blocks. I'm getting these the wrong way around. <laughs> Do you reckon it'll be happy with the ints or if it's going to complain? Uh, I've got a little bit far away from where I was telling you what they are. I think I want strings. Check union. Type of argument default means there must be a string or a num type, yeah. Oh. I wonder if we still need that S at the end as well. Man. I would hope not, but I, I think the S is implied. Yeah, because when we when you get the TTLs out, they don't come with the S, but we're gonna find out in a second. Uh, it's stacked on. Got a must be in his duration string. It does need the S. That's fun. There's little things like that that you feel. So this is why you should probably be doing. Form that block uh, will probably be cleaner than this. You want just plus s's. <laughs> well, it's still like converting to string and then plus s, whereas you could just be like, uh, what it be oh, percent s dot format. In percent s dot format. Uh, in quotes, percent s s. In, you need to in quotes. <laughs> See, if you just go dot, that that is correct. Center, to center. Nope, that is correct. <laughs> um, and then format, and then in brackets max TTA. Oh yeah, of course. It's just, um, <laughs> it is. Don't need to tell really the S in the name. <laughs> Technically, that is probably cleaner than what you were doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if it makes more sense to me or less. <laughs> but yeah, it's a little bit easier to, to read. Didn't like that. Oh wow, it's easy as dot lot. Uh, so the format, okay, that may not be how you can you use format. F instead. Actually, see, leave as it is, just do F. F. So the quotes, before the quotes, just put F before the quotes. Yeah, and then, yeah, do that. Just test that one out like that. I put F in front of the other one as well. Oh, uh, no, I'm an idiot. So that's not how you write format script in um, Python. It, it makes not? far more sense the way it's meant to be. No, 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 sorry. Delete, delete what's before the quotes. You don't need anything before. The, you don't need, the, yeah. Instead of S, just do open, close, uh, curly brackets. Instead of? Instead of percent S, you don't need the percent either. Oh, uh, yeah, it's a ginger. Because what I did works in Java and Go, uh, but this is Python. There we go. <laughs> Seems to like it now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
back end maximum will be less than the back end default. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like more more error catching. <laughs> <laughs> but that's fine. Uh, should we call that stream? <laughs> yeah. I want one successful apply, so. Okay. There we go. All right, let's summarize this. So what did we do today? Yeah, maybe that's working. Um, well, we deleted it and reapplied it. So the user that I set up will have been gone. Was, has gone. But yesterday, we kind of used the CDK to harden a bit of Terraform in a way. Maybe it would be a little awkward in regular Terraform. Mm, we're kind of touching, sort of starting to see why this is useful uh, over regular Terraform, because putting these kind of logics in, having I mean, your custom error messages or warning messages, is, is just something you can't do with Terraform. You, there's no print. Your best chance would be to put out like an output report that you could format, but it would just be messy. We have to do something. Mm -hmm. Like the only option, the only way to do stuff like this would be through sensible functions. Yes. Because if I scroll up uh, to where I did, yeah, see we have our two warning messages here saying it's capping this. So that is quite useful. And then we've just used it in the context of Vault because it's relatively easy to do locally rather than spinning up AWS instances. I think I actually managed to get through the whole thing without sharing, accidentally sharing the root token, which is good. <laughs> so something we've not always been good, uh, best at. <laughs> but the, if, even if I did, it's a local one, and this cost me nothing. <laughs> so, yeah. Kill it and start again. <laughs> Burn it with fire and d delete that for the persistent volume claim. Aggressively, I, if the old... I don't know if I actually did delete the old one because I spun this up and I spun up the command ever so slightly wrong. Um, so, this is in the default names. Yeah, so you can see I still have the old one and it's, it's terminating still in the term. It's been terminating for like two weeks now. <laughs> so, I I don't know. I I will at some point. We need to. I need to ask someone with significantly better Kubernetes knowledge what's going on with that because I think it is just a a bug. Yeah, but probably. That's kind of. Anyway, until is. next time. Yeah. Is there anything else anyone to say? It's been a long one today. I kind of overrun. Well, we just need to get that stuff finished. <laughs> I didn't even notice until I looked across at the time. I was like, oh, wow, it's been gone. When we were like hard debugging, I was like, it would be nice to get this working. We can overrun it all day. <laughs> so, okay. until next time, remember to, oh, words, brain. Okay, follow on Twitch, and then it's like, share, subscribe, something about a bell on YouTube. And yes. That it, is all the, the social media. Bell. All the socials. Um, yep. Until next time. Until Bye. Next Bye. Bye. Bye.